Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Man-sized tones today, Dan. Without boy, yeah, being boy. too sexist about it. Blimey, alright. That was a that was a that was a grown-up human's guitar sound, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I've got a sore throat, so if I am clearing my throat, I apologise in advance. You can just talk slow and sexy. Yeah, I'll be on baritone today. What we thought we'd have a look at today, for uh, all a matter of whatever reason, we just happen to have some amazing P90 equipped guitars. And it's such an interesting sounding pickup. Yeah, whenever we have a P, so as, as regular, whenever we have a P, as when regular viewers will know, Dan 61, Les Paul Jr. <laughs> Uh, obviously more commonly referred to as an SG, but that was before they changed the name. Um, a guitar that features on the show quite a lot, and also I have a Collings 290 <clears throat> DCS, which features on the show a fair bit as well, and whenever we play them, people tend to say, blimey O'Reilly, those guitars sound amazing, why don't you use them more? So, because for the majority of the time, we are playing, well, Dan and I, for the majority of the time, playing standard single coils. Mm -hmm. Red, Dan's Telly, My Blue Strat are our kind of core guitars. Mm -hmm. And then we have humbuckers for good measure, but P90s, different thing entirely. Actually, while you say something about that, I'm gonna go and get something Ooh. of interest. Okay. Uh, okay, so difference between a standard single coil and a humbucker and a P90. Single coil uses um, magnetic pole pieces, uh, whereas a P90 uses bar magnets on either side. Oh, it appears that Mick has bought some... <laughs> some pickups. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I can't take them to bits, but that was, a, that was a very good start, Dan. Right, okay. Well, let's, okay, so here's, this is our standard single coil. Yeah, right? which isn't a standard single coil, as you'll right. see, but That's we can explain that. <clears throat> That's a very unusual Strat single coil because it has a um, metal base plate. Ah, that's the telly. The, so this is yeah. A, yeah so okay. that's unusual, but right. anyway. But that's but the the idea it's about the only one this is hand. that you've got these pole pieces here are magnets. Yep. And then that is surrounded by many thousands of turns of copper wire. Has a top plate, base plate. Yeah, but most most of them don't have a base plate. Most of them, the metals just go. Yeah, most through. of them. If you can just hold that still for a sec for Simon, yep. most of them would just have that um, black plastic or whatever the original material was. That the the brass bit on the bottom is extra. That's what you'd find on a telly pickup. But yep. normally it's just this top plate, that bottom plate, as you were as you yes. were saying. So. The magnetic field created by these magnets, as the string passes through that, creates a current that goes through there. Right. P90, now, P90 differs. It's, it's wider. Yep. It's still a single coil, right? One single coil of, of uh, copper wire. But instead of having the pole pieces that are magnets, you'll see here you have two bar magnets on either side. You can see that better in that view. So top plate. Bottom plate, very bottom plate. Underneath this black tape here, well, I was going to peel it back. Can't believe I'm doing this. Anyway, so, so, no, I can't believe I'm doing that. Uh, to be fair, it's not a brilliant pickup. Somewhere underneath all that black tape is the wire mm -hmm. windings, and then these shiny bits here you can see are the Alnico bar magnets. Or not necessarily, a more modern P90 remake might have ceramic mm -hmm. bar magnets. but. The original P90 came out in 1946. It was the replacement for the pickup that Gibson had made in 1940, which right. has commonly been referred to as the Charlie Christian pickup. That's the one you see in like an ES150, like the guitar that Charlie Christian played. Mm -hmm. And instead of a single row of screw poles like that, it had a bar. Yep. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. We could go on all day about that. Go on to Wikipedia, read all about the history of... Um, P90s, but actually construction-wise, it's got more in common with what we think of as a modern humbucker in terms of the bar, uh, the bar magnets and mm -hmm. the windings and all of that. But it, because it's a single coil, it has more. As, as far as noise is concerned, it has a lot more in common with the standard single coil. Yes, 
It's, the P90s are very susceptible to noise, it must be said. Yep. Um, what else do we need to say about them? Not much, really. No. Tonally, they're considered to be slightly fatter, warmer, with less shrill high end. Mm -hmm. It's not always the case, because it depends on the guitar. Uh, yeah. To wit. To woo. What we thought we'd do, we've got, as Dan said at the top of the video, uh, Serendipity has stepped in. And we just seem to have quite a lot of cool P90 guitars with kind of humbucker equivalents. Yeah. So that we can compare. Okay. Um, Shall we start? Let's start from the top. We'll come back to these. This is, uh, oh, we'll come back to that. Um, <clears throat> first thing I want you to do, Dan, is play this guitar. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lordy, Lordy. This is Simon's 1954 Gibson ES125 which was a very common electric guitar of the time. And it has an original, original pickup? Yeah. Man, this is unbelievable. Just in case you're wondering, it is an acoustic guitar. And it's tempting to think that the electric guitar was invented in 1950 when the Fender Telecaster came along, but of course it wasn't the case. Go back 10 years. Um, and they were putting, like, as I said, that Charlie Christian pickup came out 1940. 40. So through the 40s, hollow guitars like this were developing. Anyway, this is turning into a guitar history lesson. Simon, you must be the happiest man in the world. This is amazing. It's a cool guitar, isn't it? And this is what a vintage guitar actually looks like. I, you know, it's not all beaten and knackered and, and the, the, the lacquer isn't cracked beyond. It just looks like a lovely old guitar. It's a beautiful thing. It really anyway, is beautiful. That's, that's the, in many ways, that's the P90 in, in kind of its I mean, okay, this is mid '50s. This guitar, so we were well underway with solid body electrics by then. But right. this is in its, you know, in a very natural home. Flat wounds. Floating blah, blah, bridge. Blah. Looks like it's stuck down. It's not original, not floating. Okay. The original yeah, would be original. a wood version of that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, uh, easier to imitate. Yeah. And non-original tuners as well that stay tuned slightly better. Beautiful. Cool. Just beautiful. So we thought we'd we'd. we'd Introduce that for a bit of fun. I don't think Dan wants to put it down. How how um, how much earlier did we find P90s on guitars than this? Uh, Forty six. It was introduced. Right. Okay. So so eight years earlier. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. And then it ran. So it the P. Sorry, just to finish the history bit. The P90 replaced the, um, the what they call the Charlie Christian pickup uh, as the standard pickup on Gibson electric guitars. And then, of course, 1957 comes along. Humbucker. Took them that long. Ah, uh, wow. And if you look at if you look at Gibson's pre-57, uh, so this um, no, that's not a good example. Um, 175s, mm -hmm. the Scotty Moore guitar 290, is it? Is that what they call it? ES 295, the gold one with the right. Florentine cutaway. Um, you know, P90s, uh, and then. 
57, 58, 175 gets humbuckers. So before that, they would have been P90s. Anyway, right. I think we've probably banged on long enough about okay. that. Right. So let's come forward. Seeing as we're in that world, mm -hmm. let's come forward four years from there. I'm going to give you this. Hey, hey, yeah, you are. Oh, man. Uh. Thank you, sir. Now I'm going to pick up this. So, what we've got today, as I said earlier, are basically pairs of guitars that aren't the same because, you know, as we've touched on in previous videos, um, everything's always different. Always. But they're similar. They're in similar worlds. So that is a new Collings i30 LC, which is based on the Gibson 330 stroke Epiphone Casino. So it is completely hollow. It's got a smaller body than this. This has got a centre block. So we are dealing in with, there are significant differences, but we're kind of in the same game. Yep. So, shall we begin? Okay. So what, what I thought we'd do, look, why don't, why don't we start with a cleanish yep. kind of sound. Okay. And then maybe we, maybe we could use different levels of game for each guitar. Maybe, sure. Maybe that okay. would work. Yep. I don't know. What you got there then? Is that you? Right. Back to some click. Can I have some reverb and delay a sec? Let's try the middle middle setting here.
What are you hearing? The... There's definitely a... It, it goes beyond just top end, doesn't it? Because there's... Um, there's a... There's a fundamental thing happening with the with the humbuckers because it still has top end, but there's a there's a fatness to it, almost a, almost a like a built-in level of compression with it. That's the word I hope it was hoping you were going to say because right. when we first started doing the when we turned the bad bob on, which is um, it's kind of a full range boost, but it definitely has a bit of sizzle on it, mm -hmm. doesn't it? So mm -hmm. that's that's why the the amps were driving a little bit or the pedal was driving a little bit. Um, there was a point where I was thinking, oh, they don't actually sound that much different. They sound quite similar, but then turning the volume control down, going to cleaner sounds and all the rest of it, exactly what you say, you get that open, more open top end, mm. but less compression. Yeah. That, felt, that feels like a much more dynamic guitar, yeah. which of course may have a lot to do with the construction of the guitar and every, all the other variables. Mm -hmm. And at this point you might fall into two camps. There are those people out there, some of you might watch this show, who believe that the rest of the guitar makes no difference to the guitar, <laughs> the electric guitar. I'm sorry for laughing, but it's anathema to me that anyone can believe that, mm -hmm. even if you take two tellies. Um, you know, so the other, the other camp is probably where we are and mm -hmm. most guitar builders are, which is, you know, the rest of the guitar makes a fundamental difference, huge, huge difference. to how everything else sounds. Yeah. It, not, and not only to how it sounds, but, and this is one of the reasons that we, we don't use a looper and just play the same thing through different pedals. Of, you know, like today we're using different guitars. But I will want to play completely differently. This guitar makes me want to play something different than that yeah. guitar. And I, some, some of that is down to it being completely hollow. I mean, that is such a, yeah, let's play, just play it acoustically a second. Um, just, yeah, give us some of that. So it's definitely, there's no centre block in here. It's completely hollow. Oh, so 330 wow. in a casino was completely hollow and uh, 335 um, and Sheraton Riviera were, had, were centre blocked. Right, okay. So the, the, for anyone who doesn't know, sorry to gloss over that, there's a, there's a solid piece of wood that kind of runs all the way down through there. Uh, yeah, it goes all the way back to kind of there. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Whereas that one's completely hollow. So yes, of course there are, and this bridge will make a big difference. So we're not comparing apples with apples here, but an interesting comparison nonetheless. Mm. Fascinating. Because, because while they're not exactly the same, there are certainly characteristics between the two. It's like, you know, it's definitely that three through five, that yeah. thing. But I th 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 uh, let's see, as we, as we change the guitars up in a sec, that whole thing about the compression I think really starts to happen when we start getting into gain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Should we just remind ourselves what these two sound like, and okay. then before we move on? So um, let's do the bad Bob again. Kind of a, a deliberately edgy kind of sound. It sounds totally magic, that guitar. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Right. Let's move on. Um, let's go... Where are we going to go next? We're going to go... Uh, where are we going to go next? We are going to go... Okay, this is interesting. Shall I get rid of that for you, no. sir? <clears throat> Familiar guitar for that pedal show. Less familiar guitar for that pedal show. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, it's well, it's well chunked, this guitar. Uh, right, so, PRS DGT model. Now, the DGT model is based on something that um, 
David played for years called a McCarty model, which is the guitar that... David Grissom. Yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. David Grissom. Oh, blimey, Riley. <laughs> Have we mentioned anyone else? Did you ever meet Charlie Christian? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, David Grissom worked on with Paul Reed Smith uh, for years and years and years. It became the, the DGT model. Uh, he had played a McCarty for a long time. McCarty being Ted McCarty. Right. Significant because Ted McCarty was um, president of Gibson throughout the important bit. You, you've met him? Uh, I shook his hand. Okay. Never really spoke to him for very I saw him at a NAMM show because he um, helped Paul develop this guitar, which is the McCarty model. Wow. Yeah, yeah, which, which has come in various um, variants over the years, but this one... It's 2002 and it had some, so, oh, we haven't even talked about soap bars yet. No. Two types of P90 generally. Soap bar, so cool because it looks like a bar of soap. Um, dog ear, so called, because it has little ears on the little end. Little ears on the end. So, yeah. There anyway, you go. Just a brief interlude. So these are, these guitars are more similar than the two we just had. Mm -hmm. The difference, main difference is being, this has got a, uh, fixed bridge, single piece, wrap over, job, and that's got a trim. So they are, you know, they're a bit different. Right. But uh, let's see what we can learn, shall we? Shall we up the gain a bit? Okay. Let's move on. That was a Analog Man Bad Bob. This is a uh, J Rocket Touch Overdrive. Sorry, I'm battling two things. I have no idea what you play, and I haven't played this guitar in years. The, the slight difference is fascinating. There's that mid-range thing that that's just going. It's amazing. Which sort is of, something you'd associate. Let's let's just hear them without the overdrive a sec. Play a bit on that. Fascinating. Feels unfamiliar that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It does. It does. It does. It feels. Those are Seymour Duncan. I don't know. Whatever P90s they were putting in them at the time. You automatically assume with P90s that you're going to get this top end. Yeah. But just. But but this is very. It's still. There's top end there, but it's really warm and fat. Yeah. It's got that honky thing as well. Here you go. Just turn the um, overdrive on again a sec. Uh, J Rocket Touch uh, Overdrive, which was new this year at NAMM, by the way.
This sounds awesome. It's a, it's a I mean, phenomenal well, sounding guitar. Uh, uh, th that is a great sounding guitar. Is a ludicrous statement, but it it, it always does impress that guitar. Doesn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's great, but it's it. What's really interesting is that you automatically think, like I said before, there's going to be a top end, but it all depends on the design of the pickups. You can get humbucker, um, humbucker quick guitars that have this beautiful top end. Yeah. Um, whereas that, to me, it has that throaty thing about it, but this has clarity, more clarity to it. Okay, give us that back for a sec then. I'll take this. We're veering off piste a bit here, but so you might say that these guitars have something in common in that they have a similar bridge arrangement. Okay. This is Simon's, um, thanks for lending to your guitars today, Simon. Uh, Simon has impeccable taste in many things. Guitars seems to be one of them. Um, this was a, a quite a rare, actually, reissue or a, a, an American-made model that is basically a 60 special. Right. Right? Um, these aren't the original pickups. These are made by Mojo Tone. I believe, to emulate a proper 50s P90. So let's see how much more top end this guitar has. Sorry, dude. That's all right. I'll just try a bit of clean, or oh, a bit. Interesting. So there is there's more audible presency stuff mm -hmm. coming off that guitar, which mm -hmm. is also interesting because what we did before the, the show, we made sure that each pair of guitars, so the two Les Pauls, the two whatever, had similar strings on. Yeah. The, oh, they're both newish, I guess. Yeah. I well, they're brand new. They're, these are brand morning. new. Put these on this morning. Yeah. Um, I'd be interested to know what the pots are, the value of the pots are in that. Yeah. Me too. Um, it sounds like they might be two uh, fifties. Be unusual. It would be. It would be unusual, but it, it does have a, a dullness, and whether that's the pickup, yeah. the so whole what, guitar, whatever. Yeah. So what that means is uh, normally humbuckers have five hundred k pots. <clears throat> single cores have two fifty k pots. Uh, generally, single cores are less susceptible uh, susceptible um, to top end loss, which is why they can do a two fifty k pot because two fifty k is actually bleeding more signal to ground um, than a 500k pot. Um, so in a, in a P90 guitar, well, because I know I know little about the P90, I don't know. So there, there are certain guitars that have like 300k um, Yeah, Gibson, pots. Gibson, Gibson started or, doing that at, at some point, but if we're talking about traditional wiring, it's 500k for humbuckers and P90s, as yeah. far as I was aware. Right, okay. And 250s for Fender style single coils. Right, interesting. Okay. So, yeah, right. Seeing as you're on the older Les Paul there, familiar, 1958, custom shop uh, reissue Les Paul with humbuckers, 1960 reissue Les Paul with P90s. Let's see how we get on here. Uh, what are we on? We're on the tuner, are we? No. Uh, this will be you.
that compression thing again. Same story, it's isn't it? It's the same thing. There's plenty of top end in here. It's <clears> definitely because, it, you know, you've got that. <laughs> but you hear it. It's as if it's hitting its maximum level really quickly. It's really weird because, well, it's not weird at all. It, it, everyone says it. It's kind of in between a, what you think of as a single coil and a yeah. backer, and it absolutely is. It's amazing. It's about like you know, it sounds like we never played P90s before. It's actually when you sit down and do the AB is when it when it starts to get really interesting. Yeah. Let's um, add some fun, shall we? Okay. So uh, the Keeley El Ray Dorado distortion is uh, new. The first hundred are available through Keeley and Rift City, our exclusive preferred retailer in the US, um, and it is uh, based off kind of Marshall Plexi okay. kind of sounds. This, this is me, is it? Yep. <laughs> Plenty of sizzle. What are you hearing? Well, I think it, it has much to do with that pedal as anything. The pedal is really aggressive, but there's a the, there's a sharpness to it that even with you know humbuckers, it's still um, there's still a, a real defined edge to it. However, there's a there's a body behind that edge that you get with that guitar that you don't get with this. Yeah. No, okay, so yeah, they are differently constructed. This has a thick mahogany back and a maple cap. All the other things we know about classic Les Paul standard construction, that's uh, a lump of mahogany with no maple cap. So there's a difference. Mm. There's a difference in the construction of the guitars, in the bridge. So yeah, we are dealing with slightly different guitars, but yeah, that compression thing seems to be, that seems to be the uni the, the common yeah. thread yeah. in this so far. Mm. And it's and to, just to clarify that it's not it's not compression, <clears throat> you know, as uh, as we understand, you know, uh, um, it's not limiting. As a, uh, what it seems to be doing is it's it's hitting its maximum output really quickly, as opposed to this, which has a a, a larger dynamic range. Feels uh, like it, there yeah, is. Yeah, feels feels like there's a larger dynamic range. It feels yeah. like there's there's more. Um, uh, between its minimum and maximum output, you've got a lot of play there. Whereas that just goes bang and gets to, to its maximum output really quickly. Do you think it's purely down to frequency? Do you think it's which frequencies are getting pushed at, 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 at you know? Uh, no, I think it's more of a fundamental thing to do with the way that humbuckers work as opposed to, yeah, it's, I, it's really, I, you know, I don't know. But once, it's, it's once, fascinating. Once again, fascinating to hear the, uh, uh, the audio back after this. And also fascinating to say, here we are looking for sound differences and trying to explain them. And actually it's really highlighting the fact that neither Dan nor I are very comfortable with those those sounds and therefore mm. find it difficult to play. Mm. The, the, the more interesting point of that being, it, it might be that if you, know, if you find a certain combination of things tough to play and it's not inspiring you, then this is another route you could, you could look at. Mm. I have to say, um, 
So what's your guitar that you play all the time with the P90? It's probably the the junior. The junior. Yeah. And that feels completely at home and usual to you. If it, yeah. It, yeah. The guitar does absolutely, but it's sonically. Grab that. Okay. What kind of sound do you go for with with that uh, with that guitar? Where are you? Well, it's a it's a rock and roll machine. <laughs> Put new strings to this today. Yep. I just uh, I, need, I need to tune. Get on. <laughs> boop boop. <laughs> How cool is that? Who's that made by? Called the roadie too. How much have they paid you to do that? I, no, I, they sent me one, and I, and, I was, and I thought, oh yeah, here we go, and I took it out. It's amazing. So you, I, I can already see a problem. You can't hold it and play a 12th fret harmonic. Oh, is that how you tune? You did harmonic. Yeah. Do I have to set it to E? Ah, uh, hang on, yes. So if you... There you go, try now. And once this tune moves to A. Boop, boop. Oh, I didn't take it off quick enough. It went up to A. I just, I'm just, all I'm doing is proving the point for people who can't handle technology, me. I have such a hard time with guitar tuners. A, because they're never in tune, for me. Right. And B, I'm, the interface. So you prefer the old turbo tune to that, don't you? Yeah. Why is that? I just find it works better for me. I can, I can, with the strobe tuning. Yeah. Because I, I can't I, handle the round and round thing. Really? No, I need up and down. Okay. No, the strobe. Or, le or left and right. You know, once there's rotation. Okay. <laughs> no, I, yeah, the, the the turbo tune is works really well for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So yes. So. Rock and roll machines. Get a sound, get a sound. Get a sound that's more inspiring than the one you just had. Okay, uh, let's go. If I. Oh, heat yeah. is on. <clears throat> Blimey. So much honkier, this one. So much honkier, yeah. Interesting. So, uh, that to me, in my brain, is the P90 sound, the bit of the honk. Right, okay. Whereas that guitar could almost be a humbucker some days. Yeah. But as I understand it, mm. what, what, where are you with that? Well, it's, I've, <clears throat> I mean, I've, I've done whole gigs with this guitar, mm. clean stuff, you know, everything. Um, I actually find this really um, flexible and, you know. Same? Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's something about, you know, that just, it's one, a single pickup. There's no routing here, you know, it's so, lots of wood. Yeah. One thing I really like about the, the P90 sound is if you don't have any gain on it.
amps aren't really loud enough. I'm going to turn on a bit of Bad Bob just to get a bit of boost in there, but... I've done. I've played acoustic guitar parts in in songs. <laughs> really? Like that? And yeah, you know, it's, it's not. It doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar, but it's closer than. Yeah. It because you get all that zing and. Yeah, then, and it doesn't sound like second position on the strat. You know. Nothing like. Yeah. That. Very cool. Yeah, I, I and that that that's the uh, to pick up what he was saying about the versatility earlier. I'm uh, lucky enough every now and again to do gigs with Robbie McIntosh. Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, that guy. Yeah, through no other reason than um, we're, we have mutual friends and anyway, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and sometimes I'm lucky enough to, to be in the same band as Robbie. And I remember a wedding gig in particular. I turned up, Strat, uh, definitely Strat, I think probably my DGT, massive pedal board, channel switching amp, you know, just so I could cover all bases. Mm -hmm. He turns up with one of those. Tiny little pedal board and a very simple amp, and right. proceeds to get every sound imaginable mm. all night. And it's that's Robbie, man. He's just yeah. But it shows it, 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 it indicates it, yeah, the versatility of, yeah, yeah. of that setup because most people would look at that and look at this and go, and they hear that mid range and they hear that I can only get yeah, one sound exactly. out of that guitar. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know really. Where, where, where are we at this point? What have we What have we said about P nineties? We've said that they're different from humbuckers, mm. and we've proved that a little well, bit. Well, yeah. So, if a, if a normal humbucker or a normal single coil isn't exactly doing it for you, it's definitely worth a try. You know, because they are, you know, fundamentally different. But they have a there's a clarity with them. There's a there's a dynamic range with them, but there's a fatness to them as well. James Bay, his favourite pickup. There you go. Yeah, I mean, he has his sound is unusual right from the beginning, isn't it? Not doing this very successfully. I need a roadie down. Maybe when we move, we think we're going to move. By the way, we think. Fingers crossed, we found some premises. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, James, his sounds odd because he down tunes and he's got that big Epiphone century and mm. but yeah p90 key to that p90 i remember being at my, uh, mike to, just to come back to the uh collings i30 for a second being at mike analog man's and we went over to see him last end of last year mm. and he had that epiphone mid 60s epiphone casino oh my word what an alive guitar with oh, low and man. you know loud really loud it's just almost every note at every opportunity is is harmonic feedback if you incredible want. is that the is that the um <clears throat> John Lennon. Did the John Lennon guitar. Yeah. Right. The one that was sunburst and then he had stripped. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't we finish off then with some serious messing about. Now, massive apologies to insert name here because you keep asking for the dope priest and we never have it on. So we've got it on, especially for you today. And we've been hammering through the comments trying to find your name and I'm really sorry we couldn't find it. But this is for you because you keep asking for it. Um, what is it? It's a Big Muff um, by uh, Dynamic Audio Manifestation. Uh, it's their take on a... Uh, Emanating Fist Electronics. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's... Uh... <laughs> Thank you. 
Am I hearing more top end in this? Oh, I don't know. Interesting. Oh, I didn't get that. Simon? No? Probably just about. Really? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Give us a, give a power chord B. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, both. Very interesting. But there you go. See, it's not always about top end. No, I, I don't know what pickups these are actually. And there we go again. Oh, they sound different. There must be a, you know, there's obviously some explainable reason. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, I wonder if these are ceramic, which is what I, I did wonder that in the last video we did, but I don't think they are. We oh, use, use sorry. Them a bit more. Before I forget, yep. just um, one. Thing. Ah, everyone's been saying right from the beginning, where's the Huber? Well, yeah, so here's the Huber. Um, I'll just, is that, yeah, go to you. <clears throat> and this is a P90, but a humbucker sized P90. Oh, okay. So um, you can get, you know, you can get humbucker sized P90s so that you don't have to completely, you know, Block up holes and stuff. Yeah, if you wanted to put a P90 in your humbucker routed guitar, for yep. example. And it is, you know, it's a... Now, my recollection of that guitar is that it does have a good old honk on it. So, this is the other honkiest guitar we have today. Okay, so let's let's go back oh, to the. That's um, you, isn't it? Sorry, yeah. If we go back to the touch. So that's louder than this one. It's louder and it has more top end. Yeah, well, it has less honk. It has so less I don't, honk. I don't know and if so, yeah, the same thing. yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So, look, P9s are as different as as every other pickup yeah. going, but there's there's still a um, there's a fatness to them. Yeah. There's a I mean, there is that mid range thing. Seems to, to be. Yeah. And, Seems but, to be. And that dynamic area it does yeah that's what I that it, if there are common themes between all of these guitars the p90 guitars apart from the dgt yeah that seemed to have a wider dynamic range mm. those humbuckers seem to have a wider dynamic range yeah than some of the others we played yeah the sg the sg yeah that sounded awesome loads i wonder if they also have it you know i don't know be interesting to find out fascinating well it just shows doesn't it it, it what what it really underlines is making generalizations about all of these things mm. kind of gets you nowhere because yeah. it does vary from guitar yeah, yeah, to absolutely. guitar and it does vary from pickup to pickup. So absolutely. Um, what have we learned? <laughs> that we like P90s and it's great to have some in your arsenal. It's but, so funny, you know, because the Cream gig we did recently, I played my 335 and I played this. Mm -hmm. And for all the cleans, for the, a lot of the clean sounds, anything that was kind of arpeggi arpeggiated clean like the, um, 
all that stuff. Mm. Um, and this guitar just worked brilliantly. And I think I played it in Crossroads as well, which wow. is that kind of middly honky. Did I? I can't remember. I can't actually remember. But the live experience of of this is fundamentally different from what we're hearing in mm. here today. Mm. It's I, I don't I don't even know how to explain that. Well, maybe maybe if we move premises, uh, a band room can we can start getting into that. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Mm. Let's do that. That was fun. It was fun and uh, unnerving, and <laughs> I feel like I just want to play now, yeah, yeah. rather than yeah, go. Oh, what does this sound like? Brilliant. Thank you, guys. We really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is uh, Anderson's Music of Guilford Surrey. In the USA is Rift City Guitar of New Hope, Minnesota. And in Australia, Brisbane, Queensland. Is. <laughs> His pedal, <laughs> pedal empire. There you go. Yeah, he takes the. I think he's embarrassed me on behalf of Australia. No, I just, you know. You just got to get it right. Queenslander. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Um, I like a t-shirt. I like yours too. Interesting. This was, this logo was introduced the year after the P90 was con discontinued <laughs> as Gibson's standard pickup. Did they discontinue it? No, 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 they didn't. They kept, it kept it stayed in many guitars. It kind of went away, and then uh, it had it's had various resurgences over the years. Right. So this Gibson are still making P90s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah. Big time. Right. Yeah. But Very they cool. they kind of ebb and flow in in trend. I think it's fair to say. Right. Apart from people with people who really love them who wouldn't play anything else. Right. Mm. Anyway, cool. yeah. Uh, 1958 reissued T-shirts in the That Pedal Show store. Please check them out. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, and finally, a uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much. I, am I saying that correctly? Someone... Pa they're patrons, and the platform is called Patreon. Okay, that's correct. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All right, yes, thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Have a fantastic week. We'll see you next Friday. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Bye.